Hello everyone, I'm Allison Lovejoy, Music Appreciation Instructor at Rosner House, and I want to say a warm hello, and I hope you enjoy the music today. I miss coming in to talk for you, but I'm going to play for you some of my favorite pieces by Mozart and Bach today. The first piece is from the very famous C Major Sonata by Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. He wrote this sonata also known as the Sonata Kirchel number 545, which is just a way of saying that's the opus number or catalog number of his work. Anyway, this sonata has three movements. A fast movement, the first one. The second movement, a slow movement. And the third movement is a fast movement. We call this Sonata Allegro form in the first movement. In this movement, we have two themes. The first theme is one character. And then it has some following material. The second theme is a contrasting character with a different melodic shape. And it has also some follow-up material. Each of the themes is usually in a different harmonic area. And what they are really like is like two characters, the two main stars of a film, so to speak. And they have an adventure. They go to another harmony. From C major in the beginning, we end up in G major, the dominant, the five chord of the key of C. So the action begins. That whole section is called the develop the, the exposition. And the exposition gives you the two main themes, and then it's followed by the development, which wrestles those themes together, different harmonies. It adds some excitement. There is maybe a conflict or a car chase or uh, some sort of um, antagonistic character, possibly, that takes them to new harmonic places, maybe some faster scales, so maybe some unknown harmonic territory. And that is here in the development. <laughs> etc. So you can feel the tension building until we come back to the main theme in what we call the recapitulation. Doesn't it sound familiar? Well that's what makes listening to sonata form so satisfying. It's like reading the book in which your favorite characters turn out fine, a bit like a Hollywood script. At the end, sometimes a composer will take them and put them on another new adventure. But in this case, the theme wasn't in the original key of C, it was in the key of F. But we still come back to theme two. In our beloved C major home key. And then we get to finish the piece. On a big cadence from G to C. B. It sounds so final and so perfect because it's a perfect organization of wonderful ideas in a musical form. So I will play the whole first movement of the sonata in C major for you.
Concert, three pieces would be performed in succession. These movements form the whole cohesive sonata. The first movement you heard is in sonata allegro form. The second movement is like an aria, something Mozart wrote a lot of, a lot of wonderful arias in his operas. The melody in the right hand sounds like it could be a singer or a violinist. It's, it's very expressive. And, um, and very lyrical. Whereas the left hand serves as a harmonic and rhythmic accompaniment, a gentle wave, so to speak, that sustains the melody. But really what we're here for is to calm down the energy, to bring us to a new relaxing mood in the context of the whole sonata, and to enjoy some gorgeous perfect melody that only Mozart could write. Thank you. 
where you're nice and relaxed and you want to applaud or maybe you've taken a nap and that is when the composer brings on the third movement and this is the Allegro Rondo movement which there are many sections usually a rondo has a main theme a second theme and a third theme and they keep repeating and intermingling or returning at certain points and then there's often a quota towards the end now this rondo has, rondo is like an old dance, it's a, from the Middle Ages actually, a rondo, and it has two beats of measure and it's very upbeat. And then it goes on with a new idea. And then he plays around with the ideas and takes you into some new key territories. But it's meant to have a finish with, leave you with a smile on your face. Uh, a satisfying ending to uh, one of Mozart's smaller sonatas. She actually composed for a student, possibly his sister. And it teaches you a lot of the ideas that one should learn as a piano student, or at least at Mo in Mozart's time scales and chords and arpeggios and melody of course and some imitation which you'll hear quite a lot of in this rondo allegro <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you so much for listening to Mozart's Sonata in C major, and we'll see you next time.